Joining us now from the Sporting News, one of the great NBA writers, uh, contributes frequently to the program, Sean Devaney. Uh, Sean, I know you're in Chicago tonight and a little under the weather, so we appreciate you uh, joining us. Well, yeah, I'll pretty much be under the weather for like three or four months. That's how it goes in the winter around here. <laughs> so that's just, that's just, that's just part of the course, really. <laughs> well, good. Well, next time we have you on, then thank you for then, too, whenever that is, because I'm sure it'll be within three or four months. Yeah. Uh, we always read your stuff, and, and, and you know, the reason that we're having you on, I think you probably know, there's, there's an article that ties kind of directly to a market like Portland and a situation like Portland with free agents coming up. And uh, granted, Portland has birds rights but you know when the Blazers played in New York there was an article in the Daily News that talked about okay LaMarcus Aldridge is about to be a Nick and then when the Knicks played here in Portland there was an article in the Daily News that said okay well I think they're going to take Wesley Matthews from the Blazers and there's this assumption that the big markets get the guys they want now and in your article on the Sporting News kind of debunked a lot of that and said this is not the past this is a different day and age and and, and some of the quotes in there from some of the personalities around the NBA, including players, were saying that's not necessarily the case anymore. Market size is not as vital as it used to be, especially as it pertains to free agents. Yeah, well, I, I mean, there's a couple things. Number one, I think you start with uh, if you only read the New York paper, <laughs> then you would assume by now they would have the greatest team in NBA history because every player – always wants to play New York, and they always want to go to the Knicks. And, and then when it comes time to sign the contract, uh, they wind up signing, uh, uh, you know, back where uh, or, or, or in smaller markets. So, you know, it, 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 it never really quite works out the way that uh, that, that those publications say it's going to work out. That, that, the, the, that, that would be number one. And, and then number two is think about who is the number one uh Paid endorser, marketed player in the NBA right now, and he yeah. plays uh, in, in Oklahoma City. And number two is LeBron, and he plays in Cleveland. And so these these are not big markets. And really, when you break down the markets, you look at where top notch free agents have gone uh, in recent years. Uh, it has nothing to do with market size. It really does. Is, is it, you know, a lot of the reason you think about it, is it the because of, I, I don't know, almost social media, league pass, the accessibility to games? Because in the past when I was growing up, I mean, you got you got Boston on CBS on Saturdays against Philadelphia. That's it. I mean, and so the guys you knew, if you were from a smaller area, you never saw the other games. Now they're so accessible, it seems like, I mean, does that have something to do with it? Is that, as, is that why you can have a big-time endorser in a market that isn't uh, one of the top five? Yeah, I think that's absolutely the case, that, you know, the the notion of uh, of New York as being the, you know, the center of all the media, uh, that, that, that's out the window. You know, every every team uh, is pretty well covered, uh, you know, coast to coast. I mean, maybe they don't get national TV games, but if you're an NBA fan, uh, you, you have all these games available to you. And, and certainly any NBA star like Kevin Durant uh, is going to be uh, uh, pretty well publicized. Even somebody, say, an Anthony Davis uh, in, in, in New Orleans, uh, you know, they're not on national TV a lot. Uh, I believe they only have one or two games this whole year. But when you look at it, let's see where they are next. You know, when, when he starts to blossom, he's going to be on TV, you know, 10, 15 uh, times uh, ne- next year, so you, you know, I, I, I really think that uh, it is a matter of, like you say, you know, it, it's not the Saturday afternoon game anymore. Uh, there's there's so many games on TV, so much national exposure for these guys that uh, uh, I, I market size just it, it doesn't mean what it used to mean. No question about it. You know, you threw out some stats uh, of about the year 2010 in your article when there was. 76 major free agents, and those are players that made over $7 million, 29 signed with different teams uh, of the 76. So, And man, only 19 went to a bigger market. Yeah, went to a bigger market. So it, it, those stats th- thrown out almost prove that what Kevin Love said yesterday, that uh, I'm going to opt in for another year, and then when the big money comes in from TV – I'm going to uh, stay in Cleveland and get a big max contract in Cleveland. So 
they're kind of saying what you're saying in your article that it doesn't matter the size of the market. And the Lakers still think they're going to just cash in next year. Do you see them making a big move next year in the free agent market? Uh, you know, you talk to any general manager right now, and they'll tell you that one team that they hear from all the time is the Lakers because they want to make a trade. And the reason they want to make a trade is they know they can't just go out there to a bunch of free agents and say, hey, sign and play with us uh, and everything will be great. Uh, that's that's not how it is anyway. You know, it's not I, – I think if you're a Laker fan, you look back and you say, well, we got Shaq, we got, we got Magic Johnson, you know, we, we, we got uh, uh, Kareem. You know, you go back through history and see the Lakers always get some, some great players that sort of fall into their laps. Well, you know what? It, it's been 20 years happen. So, you know, maybe it's not how it's all, but, but even that is it's another era. And, and, and the way that the rules are now, you just can't do that anymore. So, uh, you know, I, I, I really think there's a combination of, uh, you know, sort of a, um, a a shrinking of the world. You know, you see that that, that small market is still uh, very well covered and, 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 and not as remote as maybe as they once uh, were. And then you combine that with the way that the league has just changed the rules, you know, changed the, uh, the luxury tax rules and changed all the, all the other things that used to be advantages for big markets but not anymore. So, you know, I really do think that, uh, uh, that, that it is a different time in free agency for the NBA. And, and, uh, and, and, and you're seeing the effect of that. And we're going to see the effect of that uh, in the next few years. Well, and you talked about Kevin Durant, you know, being the, the highest paid endorser right now in the league. And it seems like when you do read a lot of the papers from the bigger markets, especially New York that we already talked about, it kind of the assumption is, well, no way he's going to stay there and finish his career. And everybody has created scenarios in which he will leave. And, and even, you know, Damian Lillard in the previous segment, we talked about how he got his signature shoe from Adidas. It, it, you know, it was announced today and revealed today and um, proving once again you, you, you can get the big endorsement money. In, in a market that isn't New York or L.A., um, is this more of this that same kind of fog that gets put out there, like people who maybe aren't up to speed with the, with things? And 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 does the does the social media stuff matter? Damien is so engaged in all of that stuff, and it seems like his popularity and the fact that everybody knows, you know, we play late when you go back east. A lot of people don't see those games, but are those guys? I mean, especially in the case of Damien, are they? getting out there being publicized and is is their popularity starting to rise because of social media and the things we've talked about previously league pass included yeah i i think you make a a, a good point that is probably unique to basketball uh in in, in terms of you know their bases of five guys on the court 12 guys on the roster uh you, you know that you do have the sort of individual branding is much more important in the NBA uh, when it comes to endorsements, when it comes to contracts and things like that, than it is in other sports. You know, baseball, where you got 25 teams, uh, football, where you got 53 uh, uh, players, and, and, and they're all under helmets, and, you know, there's not as much necessarily uh, individual in a, in, a, in a sport like that. Uh, you know, in, 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 in basketball, it is very much about individual branding, and it has been going back to Michael Jordan in the, in the late 80s. So, uh, you know, that's, that's definitely a, a factor. And, and, and social media, you can reach so many people, uh, and you can do it so easy. You can do it with a few tweets a day. And, and, and that's something where, uh, as a player, you can build your own brand uh, and then turn around and, and, and monetize that. And you don't have to be in New York to do that. You can be in Portland, you know, Black City. You can be in New Orleans. You can do that from from just about anywhere. So, you know, that's that's definitely something that uh, uh, that is a factor uh, in terms of, as I said before, sort of you know, shrinking the world a little bit, where 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 it's a lot easier to reach people than it used. Sean, thanks for the time. As always, we'll have you back on soon. And a great article and good work as always for the Sporting News. Thank you. Guys, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Sean Devaney from the Sporting News and NBA writer, and, of course, an article that uh, probably very popular with uh, people in markets like Portland and some of the smaller markets who's been kind of saying, hey, 
you know, do you have to be in these big markets? And this one, you know, the facts he brings up and the quotes he brings up from NBA guys and, and even talk to some young guys, um, you know, Jabari Parker and some guys like Andrew Wiggins, them saying, hey, I don't I don't care about market size. I can do it anywhere. And if, there, if anybody has been an example of creating your own brand through social media, I mean, Damian Lillard's one of those guys who's A1 in that. In his new shoe, Four Bar Friday, which he started on Twitter, in the sole of the shoe, there are Four Bar Fridays <laughs> printed. I mean, that that shows you the power and the ability these guys have to own their own brand. And and it's not like there was a PR firm behind it. And it wasn't after he got the shoe deal. It was before. And it's these, yeah. because of these reasons, is why he's getting this kind of stuff. And he's so marketable. And, you know, I, I we talked to Paul Allen at halftime the other night when he was walking over. And we talked about Russell Wilson and the two, the two guys that are kind of his quarterbacks right now are both kind of cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Damian and Russell and their values and the way they carry themselves on the field. What great guys to market around oh. if you're those two teams. Especially if your team's winning, which well, and both, both happen to be. Both happen to be winning.